Playoffs? Playoffs? Yes, playoffs. It's nice that we can have the confidence. No, no, no. It's nice that we can be in the conversation when it comes to the playoffs. Because the Ravens, even with everything that they've been through this year, with all the drama, with all the injuries, with all the mistakes, with everything, they are a playoff team. And when you're a playoff team, you got a chance. You got a shot. But how much of a shot? How much of a chance do you really think these Baltimore Ravens have? Well, I look forward to hearing from y'all, but I also look forward to hearing from some very special guests so they can let us know exactly how much these Ravens have a shot at winning and maybe how much another team does too. Yeah, this feels like a dream. That's the team keep it clean. Two very, very special guests uh, in the building. Um, we got the fellas from the Cincinnati podcast, Ace and Zim. Before I introduce it, well, I guess I kind of introduced y'all already. But um, I just got to say, I, I am very proud of uh, what y'all got going on over there. I'm very proud of um, you all creating your own lane. I love to see people do their own thing their own way. Um, I, I like how, you know how when we might be on Twitter or something, and we'll see like a quote from some football player about whatever. And ESPN, they'll have, they'll put out a picture of the quote, they'll show the player and stuff, and they'll show their own little quotation marks. And you know their font. But I, I've been seeing, especially recently, when it'll be a quote or it'll be stats or something, and it'll say Cincinnati Pod, and it'll have y'all, your font on there and whatnot, and y'all logo. I say, okay, I see those boys, man. They, they y'all got such a professional uh feel to it and a professional aspect of it but y'all still make it fun in the process because a lot of people, they, they can't do professional and fun. They don't think the two go together, but y'all two definitely do that. So I want to say uh, first, before we get into the game, I appreciate what y'all do and I love what y'all do. And I'm proud of the fact that y'all two are doing it the way y'all been doing it. I love the, the relationships that y'all have established. Obviously y'all y'all close with a lot of the players and coaches and personnel and whatnot, and a lot of the teammates, their family and stuff. So that's real right there because doing what, you do, especially like uh, whether you want to call it podcast, content creation, whatever you want to call it, doing what you do is a very, it's a very tricky lane because we talk about the players, we talk about the performances, and we want to be honest, um, but at the same time, y'all do it with respect. So it, it takes, it, it definitely shows that the, the, the players and their families and stuff, they respect what y'all do and the way that y'all talk about the team and whatnot, because they still come to y'all with stuff. They still respect your work and they still got love for y'all. So I, I appreciate what y'all do. No, man, we appreciate that. I got to give you your flowers too, man. Doing what you've done on YouTube at the level that you've done outside of just the Ravens, just the impact that you've had as well, bro. We definitely appreciate you as well. Yes, oh, sir. Sure. Appreciate it, man. And, yes, and, and sir. appreciate y'all coming on, man. And let's uh, appreciate oh, you let's, having us. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Y'all already know what time it is. I wanted to have y'all on for, for week 18, but stuff was just crazy busy and stuff still crazy busy. But whew, uh, apparently, some stuff seems crazy dirty. <laughs> um, I've been seeing a, a lot of talk. It's been about the Ravens being a little extra chippy. It got a little extra chippy in that last so uh, that week 18 game. How, how do y'all feel about that game? And, and if you feel do you feel like that set like the sort of a sort of president, a precedent for this game moving forward? Uh, how do how do you feel about was it dirty? Was there some foul play going on or what? What's up? Me and Ace actually talked about this like on our last episode of the Winston Addy Pod. But for me, I, I don't know. Some Bengals fans will classify it as dirty. From, from from my vantage point, I don't think that it was dirty. I just think that – and I don't think Roquan is a dirty player or, like, any – like, the hit on T. Higgins, I don't think that's a dirty play. Mm -hmm. The point that I was making is I thought that it was unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And unnecessary and dirty get have gray areas too because mm -hmm. from – you know, depending on what kind of fan you are, like, some Bengals fans don't like Ocho Cinco when he used to celebrate. I loved it. They mm -hmm. thought it was unnecessary. You know what I mean? It was one of it, like that concept of. So when I watch football now, I know I have I know I have a really good team. In fact, I think it's probably the best team that I've ever witnessed in my entire Bengals fandom on offense and defense. And it, it's somewhat debatable. Right. But when people watch us, I think that they look for like us to just finish plays, do everything on the field and ball out all the chippiness. 
the after stuff that I deem unnecessary, I'm like, I don't need to do that. I'm just a better team. So when I see teams that do this, this isn't the first. Like week one, Minka Fitzpatrick was out there like head hunting, like you wouldn't believe. When we played the Jets, they knocked T. Higgins out the game. Like we watch this every single week. So when I see dirty plays, I know it or the chippiness or whatever. So when I see it, I just say, I think that that team feels like they aren't better than me. That's why they have to get a psychological edge and do these things unnecessarily like after the play. Now, I could be wrong. I talk to players and I feel like, you like, you know, like there's a lot of resentment and stuff there too. Roquan was late to the party, but at the same time, he hangs around people that understand some of the things that transpired last year. So I think when he plays, he probably holds some of that weight with him because he's playing with his brothers. So I I, I don't think the Bengals should be playing like that. If you talk to an average Bengal fan, they'll say, don't fall into the trap. If you're talking to like most of the comments I see for the Ravens fan, they're like, do more of that. Like it's going, let, <laughs> let's let's get Jamar. Like it, I'm gonna tell you the wildest thing. Yeah. We're saying that Roquan is people are saying he's dirty or chippy or whatever. Then 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 Ravens give a new contract <laughs> to Roquan Smith. I'm like, all right, so not only are they seeing that, then the timing of it is just wild. It's a wild world mm-hmm. we live in. Yeah, for, is, for me, I don't think uh Roquan Smith technically was really dirty in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and from what I heard, like there were a lot of people upset with, like Zim said, the unnecessary stuff. But I think from his perspective, that's just trying to get into a good player's head. Like sometimes if you can't match up with someone physically, not saying he can't, but when you got a guy like Jamar Chase, sometimes you got to try to play mind games with him to get him out of his game, to get him out of his character. Uh, so I didn't think that he necessarily did anything dirty. I think the only things that some of the players said, because I kind of went back and looked at what Cam Taylor Britt, I believe, said to the reporter. He said that there was unnecessary stuff after the play and there were guys mm-hmm. diving at lower, lower, uh, I guess, foots or ankles, whatever you want to call it, knees. And so, you know, you look at the Alex Kappa injury. It's hard to say whether that's dirty or not. It looks suspect. It's kind of like you kind of got to give somebody the benefit of the doubt or you're going to blame them depending on how you look at that play. Another play that I saw was Cam Sample. He got his legs taken out on a play as well. So I think a lot of it was them just feeling like, hey, you didn't have to take my legs out. You could have went somewhere else. Not Not necessarily that the game was too physical, but honestly, how does that play into this one? These teams just don't like each other, man. We knew this last year when there was a lot of talk between the teams last season, and I think a lot of that trickled over. I think I even saw a Ravens player said that it necessarily wasn't really dirty plays, but guys that just have beef with each other that don't like each other. So maybe it's some of that. Uh, Will that spill over into this game? Yes, I I think it is. We've seen this before from a Bengals standpoint. I think the last time we saw it was in 2015 with the Steelers. It was the week before that. People were playing it down. Oh, it's not going to get chippy and all of that. And it definitely got a little physical. I don't think it'll be players trying to hurt each other, but there will be some big hits, I think, from both sides. Oh, yeah. You you already know, especially because that week 18, that was regular season. That, yeah. that was the last game of the regular season. But now, like, this, the stakes are so much higher. This is, like, win or you out. Okay. Like, that's it. Ain't, ain't no, okay, oh, we got to get better next week. Oh, okay, we got to work. Up. No, that's it. That's a wrap. So players is going to be bringing it um, in just so many different ways. But how is the atmosphere right now? Uh, among Cincinnati Bengals fans. Uh, back in the playoffs, again, I know there were a lot of people that felt like, oh, man, Cincinnati, they lost in the Super Bowl. They're going to have that Super Bowl hangover. And then the way that the season started, too, it was looking a bit rough, but then Cincinnati, they got hot. So how are Bengals fans feeling right now about the squad? I think we're feeling very confident, but I think we also feel a little slighted, right? Like like you said, there was talk of regression. There's all of this talk. Uh, We get the coin toss stuff thrown in there. We don't even get the opportunity to get the second seed whatsoever. We don't get a coin toss for if we do advance and play Buffalo, we don't get a coin toss in that situation. Mm. So I think a lot of the fans feel like we've got a chip on our shoulders. A lot of people are talking about the Bengals versus everybody in it. It really shouldn't be like that, but that's kind of what we've kind of been pigeonholed into basically being at this point. So I think fans are just ready for the game to get started and ready to prove that, this team does belong that last year wasn't a fluke and that it is the Bengals versus everybody. Does anyone want to chime in? Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I feel like team, you know, the team is ready. Guys are really hyped. I thought, 
I don't think they need necessarily bullets and board material, but I think mm-hmm. there were a lot of takeaways from that game. So I know from the player standpoint, now they have an extra incentive to like, you know, you know, play in this game and probably go a, a hundred miles per hour. And I just think one of the untold stories from that Monday night game was that you're this is probably the biggest Monday night game in Bengals history. The crowd was electric, like like nobody had ever seen. The emotional, uh, you know, build up to get to that, the tailgate, all these different things. Mm. Then you come out there and you start off the game like that on fire. I've never seen Paycor Stadium like that. And so Joe Burrow goes to um, the podium yesterday and he's just like, I've never been in a part of, in an atmosphere like that before. I don't know if he was just saying that just because he wants to get the Bengals fan hype. Keep in mind, he played at Death Valley with 100,000 people. Oh, so yeah, I don't know. That's kind of crazy to me. But it was super, super electric. And I think fans, as, as much as we care about DeMar Hamlin and the situation, there's a lot of, I'm not even going to say resentment, but there's a lot of unfinished business for a night game. And I think that, I mean, I was just talking to people just now that said, bro, we're going to be at the tailgate at like 12, 1 o'clock. Mm. And I'm like, man, the game ain't, you know, it's a, Bro, they they are they're ready and they're on fire. So, yeah. you know, I think a lot of the the circumstances have changed, and then you got a division opponent, all these mm-hmm. different things. So everybody's pretty hyped. Joe Burrow called for everybody to be louder than what they were last week. Oh yeah, and I, I do remember. Um, I, I remember being just as excited to watch that game as I was to watch the Ravens game, that that Bengals and Bills game. I was looking forward to it, and I was so glad. I, like I love when it's games that I look forward to. And they're not at the same time. So I can watch the game in peace, watch it in full. I ain't got to be flipping back and forth or whatnot. Um, and then, of course, we know what happened. But um, it's, the energy is going to be crazy there. It's going to be crazy there. And I did watch while watching the game. And I even tweeted about it, too. I'm like, man, see, these Bengals, they just moved down the field with ease. They, they, they made it look so easy. But with, with that game, they, they did start off making it look easy. But then in this last game, um, it didn't look so easy. Uh, because the, the the Bengals, they uh, while they did score points, there were a lot of turnovers by the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens uh, pretty much gifted them 21 points based off of turnovers early. And that was a huge difference in the game. Of course, you, you lose by 11 points. Uh, they scored 21 points off a of turnover. That's big. Um, so how, how much of a chance are y'all giving the Baltimore Ravens in this playoff game? It's not looking like Lamar Jackson is going to play. So it's probably going to be the Tyler Huntley or Anthony Brown. But how much of a chance are y'all giving these Baltimore Ravens this week? Based on what we just seen and based on – there's two different lines in the fence that I'm going to outline. The first one is it is a division opponent. I think Mike McDonald has some things that clearly make Burrow feel uncomfortable because two of his worst games in the season were this past week and week five, right? So that's mm-hmm. the one thing. But I'm going to take it on the other end too. Burrow also has a habit of if you show him or he has enough time to look at film on different things, he has enough time to come back and atone for different things, too. And any time that he comes back and rematches up, you know, like with someone, this is his first time playing against Roquan, I think that he'll be able to come back and say, you know, like these are the different things that we're going to do different. I also think that our offense, they held a lot of things back. I thought our defense – didn't play guys like Trey Hendrickson a full game. He only played 18 snaps. Mm-hmm. DJ Reader only played half the snaps. I thought that they played and they they didn't hold anything back. I felt like they played hard because you can't go half like playing football because you could potentially get hurt, you know, like playing that way. So I won't say that they, they took their foot off the guys, but I think that they held some things back. And I think that goes the same on both sides. So I don't build too much into – how many points they scored because I think that they got to a point in the game where they didn't want to show everything. And I think that went both ways. So I I think it's an interesting magazine. And I'll tell you this, the Bengals are, this is the hardest defense that the Bengals would be playing if they were to get past this game and get to a Super Bowl until they get to the NFC side. This is by far, like, I think the toughest defensive matchup um, that they would see. And as far as the chances go for them winning the game, because the defense is really good, and because the defense did fine form um, for the Baltimore Ravens, I do get them about a 30, 35% shot of winning the game. I just don't think that they can score enough points. But <laughs> I have seen the Browns come out early in the game, and defensively, that game was 0-0 zero to zero, uh, with eight minutes left in the second quarter of that game. And then the defense, Miles Garrett starts causing 
turnovers or whatever, gives them short fields. Who I know, we're down like 14, 17 points. They get the ball back at halftime. Then they start running the football. So those are the formulas, and I've seen the Bengals lose that way. So I can – that is a scenario I can see playing out. Yeah, for me, I think when you look at the Ravens' defense, that's where it starts. That's always going to give them a chance, I feel like, in any game that they go against. And this was once a unit that was at the bottom of the league. Now they're at the top of the league <laughs> when it comes to that. Like you said as well, the new defensive coordinator, I think Joe Burrow definitely did struggle with that. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a lot of that cover to those looks and the Bengals were trying to see some things with going into the shotgun and trying to spread them out and trying to take advantage of those matchups with Jamar Chase in the slot and with Tyler Boyd. It's always going to be a chess match. But the one thing that I will say is the Bengals defense is just really good when it comes to winning the turnover differential battle. Like just this team in general, they've been top 10 in it this season. That's been kind of their bread and butter. I mean, even if you go back to the Patriots game, they were pretty much going to lose that game. And then they forced a fumble uh, in the red right. zone to recover there. So this team has just been really good at getting turnovers uh, when it comes to that. Uh, turnover differential is always going to win you the game. No matter which game it is, I feel like if you turn the ball over, it's hard for you to win. So I understand where Ravens fans are coming from when they say, you know, we did give the Bengals this field position and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, any team, you're going to have to limit that. That's how the yeah. Baltimore Ravens could win this game. If they win the turnover differential battle, you guys probably win the game. Uh, I do think the Ravens have a chance just because of that defense. But I do think that Joe Burrow is a guy, and we kind of saw this last year and, and in between years with Wink Martindale, his rookie year versus the next year. Once he starts to get a feel of a defensive coordinator, he starts to get better with making those decisions. And I think it's no secret that Joe Burrow himself, as well as Bengals fans, will tell you he struggled in that last game. Do mm-hmm. I expect him to struggle the same? I just don't. This dude is so cerebral. I just can't see him mm-hmm. doing that. Uh, but I do think that the Ravens will always have a chance in this game. It's just going to come down to, like Zim said, what can they do offensively? And the thing about the Bengals is everybody talks about the offense, but they don't talk about how good the defense is as well. And I think these are two good defenses that are going to wash each other out, and it's going to come down to who can convert in the red zone in this game. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's somewhere we've definitely been struggling at the red zone. Um, so to close us out, give me I want each of y'all to give me one player on each team. For the Bengals, what's one player that has to go off in order for y'all to have success? And for the Ravens, what's one player that you feel like that just cannot go off uh, so the Ravens don't have success? Go ahead, Zan. I'm going to go with Trey Hendrickson. What mm-hmm. I saw from him on Ronnie Stanley on, on, on Monday, I would be very, very, very concerned if I was a Ravens fan. He only played 18 snaps. I mean, the the, the strip sack fumble in the end zone, <laughs> that that – that was that was probably Ronnie Stanley's worst game as an NFL pro. Like just Trey Hendrickson, 18 snaps, four pressures, two quarterback hits, fumble force, sack. He was going ballistic. That's the one guy. Trey Hendrickson can keep up that same thing. Um, then you know, I, I feel like it's curtains. I think whoever's back there, even if Lamar comes out there with a Superman cape on, you don't want to be running from Trey Hendrickson every single play just because you can't get help. And then that gives it puts the the onus on us, I mean on them to go and give help on that side. Now you that's one less guy going out on a route. Mm-hmm. The Bengals defense, like Ace was just saying, has given the lowest completion percentage and the lowest passing rating out of any team in the NFL currently this season. They've only allowed one 300 yard passer, and that was Tom Brady, who got about 80 of that in garbage time at the end of the game. These are the untold stories of the Bengals defense. So. Mm-hmm. I don't care who's out there. The defense and Trey Hendrickson cause a lot of problems. They don't get a lot of sacks, but that's that. The, on the opposite end, I would say if it can, can I take a unit? If Owe yeah. and like, oh. you know, like just the edge pressure, if they yeah. go off, cause turnovers and different things like that, the, that is the formula to beating the Bengals to me. Is in the games that we lost, it was Micah Parsons, TJ Watt. Early pressure from Justin Houston when we played you guys, and then we came back again and lost again to Miles Garrett. Anybody that didn't have elite pass rushing in the game, they did nothing to Joe Burrow. Mm. Okay. I think for it's- me, the most instrumental guy for the Bengals, DJ Reader. Um, this oh, is a guy yeah. that's going to have to try to stop a running team. This mm-hmm. is a guy that is just integral to, I think, the Bengals' run defense. And when you're facing a team like the Ravens that like to run, he mm-hmm. is going to be an integral part of this. 
for the Ravens, the guy that you can't let get off on you in this game, there's a couple guys. I, I was thinking Mark Ingram, but actually I'm going to go with J.K. Dobbins. If they cannot slow down J.K. Dobbins, who is a guy that can keep that Bengals offense off of the field by continuing to push the chains, that could be a potential issue. So I think J.K. Mm-hmm. Dobbins is the guy that you got to start. And I've heard Ravens fans say ever since J.K. Dobbins has come back, I believe he's leading the league in yards per carry. So mm-hmm. that's the guy that I would focus in on slowing down is J.K. Dobbins. You can't let him have a field day uh, to keep this offense off of the field because that will allow the Ravens to do what they do best, controlling the time of possession. All right. So appreciate y'all. Uh, good, real good answers. And, and hopefully, in our, for our case, uh, those players will end up going off. But we'll see how it goes. But I, I appreciate y'all coming on. Um, the links to their Twitters. And shout out to Zim for getting his Twitter back. Welcome back yes, to the sir. Twitter world. Welcome, uh, but man. The, <laughs> but the links to their Twitter, uh, the Wincinnati podcast, all of that stuff will be down below in the description. Uh, just let everybody know where they can find y'all at one more time on the way out. Wincinnati Pod is the Twitter name. It's just Cincinnati with a W in front of it, change, you know, changing out the C. Wincinnati Pod, P O D, and that's on Twitter and Instagram. Um, me and Ace both have our Twitter. I'm Zim Hude on Twitter and Instagram, and Ace the same, New Stripe City on Twitter and Instagram. We also have a website too for like merch, newstripecity.com and zimhude.com. All right, perfect. So all of that will be down below in the description so y'all can check it out. Again, appreciate y'all coming on again. And this Sunday night, may the best team win. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like Gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and grave it, right and grave it. Shout out to engraving.